Hello everybody, thank you all for coming. It's Friday, the weekend is here, and this is going to be an exciting episode. And it took a little bit longer to do because I had to crunch a whole bunch of numbers, create some new models as well. So we're going to delve into Wall Street's grand entrance. I did say for a long time, it takes them 90 days. We'll explain the whole 90 day thing and we'll explain who has arrived, how much they have in assets under management and what 1% allocation could mean for Bitcoin price. We'll also look at all the ETF stuff way beyond just Hong Kong, etc. With all the ETFs that are coming, we'll talk about some after hours shenanigans and we'll explore illiquid supply and how frightening it is when you look at what's going to happen after the halving and what the ETFs have done alone. <sighs> A lot of stuff to get into. Thank you as well to the mods in the chat, K, T, and D, Tesla, and everybody for coming. Uh, let me see. And Soul Strider as well. Um, <laughs> and Crypto Meme says, I'll never capitulate my Patreon membership. Well, thank you for being part of the family. I appreciate it all. By the way, Bitcoin is just about to go through 68K again. So it's it's a fun time. Now, oh, I forgot to mention as well. We'll talk about the final flush. <laughs> so you should flush a toilet right now. You should have that as a little noise. Anyway, Bitcoin only playlist is here. And we have, this is bizarre, 14 days to go. But if you notice carefully here, the data shift. Hi, Linda. Good to see you again. The data shift to April 20th from April 19th, which was two days ago. Either way, two weeks. We will be here. It'll be a Friday. It'll be a weekend and we will celebrate. A lot of people saying, can you wear the robe again? Who knows? <laughs> uh, uh, if, if Bitcoin's above 80K, yes, I will. How about that? It's recorded. Now, breaking five big firms added to iBit everybody this is big BlackRock updates its Bitcoin ETF adds five Wall Street firms and uh, what they did was they added these to their perspe prospectus the new members include ABN AMRO Clearing Citadel Securities Citigroup Global Markets Goldman Sachs UBS Securities and they're all in their S1 registration which is big news as we said before, it takes them 90 days. We'll break that all down. Why does it take them 90 days? And by the way, they must be feeling some FOMO because they know in two weeks, halving is happening and we know what happens after the halving. But here, they need to do due diligence. It's a common practice for these firms to conduct a research into the actual product. What is Bitcoin? We don't have a thousand hours to learn, but we better learn as quickly as we can. And this takes 90 days. In addition, they have risk management. They have to look at the ETF's performance under different market conditions and assess its impact on their portfolios with their little pencils and stuff like that. And hopefully they figured out, yes, adding Bitcoin is good for a portfolio. Finally, they look at the market reaction analysis. They observe the market's reaction to the Bitcoin ETF. Is it being adopted? What are the trading volumes? Are retail investors interested? Et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. And basically, as a result of all this, uh-oh, we need to get on the train quickly. Let's look at these firms. Shout out to Eric Baltunas as well. BlackRock again updated this. He has it all on his Bloomberg terminal. And these are now authorized participants in the Bitcoin party. Better late than ever, but we knew it would take 90 days. That's just how it works. Now, uh, breaking news as well. Uh, from Bitcoin Archive, they mentioned it too from Crypto Slate. Wall Street has arrived. Do not sit on the sidelines. People have no idea how big these firms are, but I do. And I ran the numbers for you because I know you're probably asking, well, what do they have in assets under management? Here you are. <laughs> so I took a little bit of time today. Uh, ABN AMRO, 417 billion. Call it half a trillion. Uh, Citadel Securities, 92 billion. Small potatoes. You know, now we live in a crazy world where a billion dollars is like nothing. Hey, Stu, thank you for coming. Citigroup, global markets, 2.4 billion. Hmm. Goldman Sachs, 2.8 trillion. UBS Securities, 3.1 trillion. These are big, big, big shops, especially the last two monsters. You add all this together, you get $6.4 trillion. And that's on top of the firms that are already in there. When you add all those up, you get to 30 trillion, 30 trillion. Big, 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 big numbers. Of course, I'm going to chuck it into my multiplier and we'll see what we get. If we assume 
These firms alone allocate 1% of Bitcoin in the grayscale, or not the grayscale, the BlackRock iBid fund. What happens to the price? Well, here we are. So first of all, I have my old IA multiplier from 2021 and also from four months ago. It is actually 2021. That's not, that's a coincidence. And I don't believe in coincidences, but it is. If they spend 1%, 1% of 6.4 trillion is $64 billion. The impact to market cap is about $1.344 trillion. The impact on every Bitcoin price is 89,600. Adding that to the current price is 155,600. That's an ROI from today of 135.76%. Remember, that first scenario is just, just the only players on the planet that buy a Bitcoin are these new five firms and they allocate 1%. That's it. The only game in town. And of course, there's way more than that. That's why this is bonkers. Wait till you get to my scarcity stuff at the end. It'll melt your face. Now let's look at what happens with a proper multiplier post having of at least 72, probably 126. The price goes to $373,000. Again, the assumption is they allocate 1% of their assets under management to Bitcoin. This thing is so scarce. Every time I crunch more numbers, it gets kind of crazy. But remember, it will not be just these five new firms. It's already the monsters that are in there, the fidelities of the world, the Black Rocks, all the other boys and girls. Then we have the Hong Kong ETFs coming. We've got ETFs coming in Singapore, maybe Vietnam and other places too. Brazil. But watch. Australia is getting their first ETF too. Uh, this is from uh, an Australian asset management called Monochrome. They will be launching their Bitcoin ETF as well. And they expect a decision from the CBOE Australia about this before mid-2024. And this ETF stands out to be the first in Australia authorized to hold Bitcoin directly from their CEO, Jeff Yu. Now, what's kind of sad for Jeff and the team in Australia, it's not going to come until after the halving. So it would be absolutely terrifying to be on the sidelines at this time. Just saying. Anyway, let's look at more what's actually going on. So BlackRock surges, GBTC eases from Coin Edition. What's going on here? I've been saying all week. It really looks like the final flush actually happened for Grayscale. Let's break down the numbers. And as Bitcoin Archive says, Justin Genesis has finished selling $2.1 billion of GBTC and they're holding per Arkham. Send it. Gone. The sell pressure is almost, almost gone. All right. Instead of half a billion of sell pressure every day, it's under 100 million now for three or four days in a row. We'll show you those numbers exactly. And from HODL 15, GBTC has no major block holder left except DCG, which is Grayscale's parent. And DCG owns 35.9 million GBTC shares. But again, with the amount of consumption that can easily be adopted. But of course, that is the crown jewel of DCG. And DCG aren't going to let that go. It's kind of all they have left. Where else are they going to park the money? Now, I did promise you some after hours shenanigans. This comes out again from Eric Balchunas, I think from Sarophagus. Have I got that right? I can't remember. Anyway, the key here is when you look at the price action for IBIT on an index of 100, Obviously, up is gains. Not much happens intraday. In fact, if you had only bought and sold IBIT intraday, you made nothing since the 11th of January. Okay, is that clear? You bought and sold intraday, you made nothing. When do the gains happen? And I said this like two or three days into ZTF that this T plus one after hour shenanigans is where the action happens. So Wall Street can make theirs. Watch this. The purple line is the after hours price action. And that's where nearly 60% of the gains happen. 60% of the gains are after hours in that purple line. Much higher volatility and significant increase in price compared to the intraday price movements. So as usual, people worry about, oh, poor Wall Street. How can they make money on 20 basis points of fees? This is how they make it. There's always money in market making, ladies and gentlemen. So don't worry about those guys. Now, where do we go next?
up or down? This is from Matt C. Uh, Bitcoin clearly <laughs> has been in that kind of narrowing <laughs> cone into the having. We know which way this is going to go up. <laughs> There's two weeks left. It's going to break out, ladies and gentlemen. And it's going to break out to the upside. And as I always say when I do these shows on Fridays, guess what happens at the weekend? You'll see. And in fact, you can tell from this chart too. After hours is when all the action happens. A platform formerly known as, thank you so much for coming. So we're going to have a good time this weekend, pretty much. Some of the other stuff is a little bit weak. I will be doing a dedicated session tomorrow, not only on this stuff for Bitcoin, but also some of the crypto. There's some interesting things happening there too. A lot of people are being flooded to death by congestion issues. Don't worry about it. It's, it's not what it appears. And remember, when you read stuff out there in the mainstream media, it's probably a lie. So hope that's clear. So breakout coming next. Pretty sure of that. Shells, thank you for coming. Now, we it's so funny. I did this video yesterday and I said, you know, short squeeze is coming. We did have a big pump right after it. And the skew is from skew actually on Twitter. But you can see that all of the action yesterday was driven by spot buying of Bitcoin. Okay. Not much on the uh, perps or the options, just spot buying. And this is very healthy for the market and big, big chunks are coming in. And there's been lots of rumors that, you know, the people that need the Bitcoin can't get it. Therefore, now we're seeing a time when people have to buy spot on the market. OTC desks are probably empty. The miners are huddling when they can, or they've already committed to selling all their bags. Now, we're going to see a time coming in the next weeks or months where literally we're going to have that $10,000 God candle because nobody will be selling and there'll be a lot of buying needed as we go forward. It's so super exciting. I'm going to go through the ETF flows real fast and then show you some very important liquid supply charts as well towards the end. So here we are, 58 days into these ETFs, 58 trading days, okay? There's 252 trading days a year. We're only 58 in. Call it, what is that, a fifth of the way through? One fifth. And the numbers have been crazy, to say the least. Uh, April 14, some of the data came in late for Fidelity last night. But they ended up bagging about 106.8, 106.6 million, which is awesome. BlackRock had a big day, 144 million. And for the third day in a row, boom, boom, boom. We had grayscale, minus 81.9, minus 75.1, minus 79.3. Super consistent, super stable, big flushes are gone. And that was a nice net positive day of nearly a quarter of a billion dollars into Bitcoin. Wait, you see the supply crunch stuff. This is a view of exactly who was playing. You can see the green flat line up there uh, for grayscale. Really nice. We had a big move in red. Ibit back strong again after a breather yesterday. And Fidelity, consistent, non-stop. Uh, let me see. Money flow, very positive. Again, big day. And money flow picking upwards again, cumulative, with all of the dumping from Grayscale. There's still over $12.5 billion into these puppies, which is massive in such a short amount of time. The green is the trend line for the money flow. It continues. Again, the money flows have not been that strong this week so far, but still they're positive. And they're about to get a whole lot more positive because of what I just opened this up with. Those big five new money centers are now in the game, which will bring a lot of money to Bitcoin. And they'll be selling a lot of IBIT as a result. Expect the IBIT numbers to go bonkers. This is the amount of money flow per fund. The red is the dumpage of Grayscale. Nearly $15.5 billion out, all absorbed by the nine new ETFs, the biggest one being IBIT, 12.34 billion, Fidelity about 7 billion, and in third place, ARK about 2 billion. Crazy, crazy numbers in terms of the actual Bitcoin flow. You can see here, Fidelity is just shy of 150,000 Bitcoin. That'll be over 150,000 Bitcoin today. 260,000 from the BlackRock, 43,500 with an ARK, and the rest are crumbs. So it is over now, over. 500,000 Bitcoin in these new puppies in 58 days. Very, very big amounts of money. 
grayscale dumpage. Hopefully soon I won't have to share this chart anymore. Pink line is the trend. We are way above trend. We had the seventh best dumpage day ever. What that means is the least worst dumpage day. So not bad at all. And more trend lines here. This one is interesting. Although 3,114 Bitcoin were removed from the system yesterday by these ETFs, the trend line is down. So the big money hasn't gone away yet. Thank you, Brayman. But I do expect that to peak up now that these big new players are coming to the table. And finally, the new chart with Mr. 100 has now been once again eclipsed by ARC. So on the average daily consumption, just to put this in perspective, IBIT buys 4,472 Bitcoin a day. Okay. Fidelity on average over 58 days by 2,575 Bitcoin a day. And Grayscale has dumped 5,000 Bitcoin a day for 58 days. These numbers are spectacular. Now, the fun charts begin here. And I've been talking about this for a long time. This is from the rational route, and it's so important to get a handle on. There's a couple of key things here that are just exciting to watch. We talk about how this cycle could be different for over a year now. I've been saying it's different. We're earlier, we're higher. Things are, go we're going into the most illiquid supply ever. Normally through a Bitcoin halving, the supply doesn't decrease this amount, but it is this time. Let me walk you through exactly what this is from the rational route. Now, a couple of things. First of all, if you look at the big red arrow, it shows you how the actual supply will only go up 2.6% over the next four years during this halving cycle. That's the first thing I want you to take away. We know, uh, and I'll shoot, give you a sneak preview of the next chart. This is the inflation per year, 0.83% after the halving in two weeks. So remember that number. If you take four times that, you get higher than 2.6. But the point is, the illiquid supply is going away. And let me try and explain what's going on here. And this chart shows you the actual halving event. And we all know about that. I don't need to explain that. But normally, the halving has a radical supply-demand shock to the system. And with bo most Bitcoins already mined, the effect of the halving might lessen over time is what I've always said. But this time is different because not only do we have far less supply, but we have far more demand. And this is predicting, this model is predicting a 6% reduction in the available supply trading over the next four years. So the blue is what you have to be worried about. The blue is going to north of 14 million Bitcoin, which is not for sale. And of course, we know part of that 14 million is stuff that's actually lost. And the addition of the ETFs investing in Bitcoin has had a huge influence on the markets. And the point is we haven't seen anything yet. The amount that the ETFs have already eaten in 58 days is staggering. You mash that against this chart, it is terrifying <laughs> if you're on the short side. So, uh, and the Russian route has been amazing on this. He talks about this illiquid supply. There's the... Available supply available for trade shrinks due to the growth of this illiquid supply. Look at the blue. That's all you need to know about. And it can lead to increased scarcity. And this will drive the price up. And that's all you need to know, ladies and gentlemen. There are people that hold Bitcoin and they are not selling until they see extremely high numbers. We're talking seven digits, a million dollars plus. Now, this chart as well, the reminder of what we're talking about and what's stunning about this these are my back of the napkin mathematics. In two weeks, there will be an issuance of 450 a day. We know 80% of miners are hodling. We only have visibility into the public miners, but there's a lot of other miners, a lot of governments out there mining, and they're just keeping their Bitcoin. But the amount of production of Bitcoin over the next four years is only 657,000 Bitcoin. Okay. 657,000 Bitcoin. You know what's staggering? Is this. The new ETFs alone, despite the huge dumpage from Grayscale, which has now gone away, okay, has sucked in 513,000 Bitcoin in 58 days. Remember, 
only 657 will be mined over the next four years, and they won't even be for sale. This is the most brilliant economic experiment in the history of the world. And if you still have a loved one that doesn't understand Bitcoin, have them watch the last few minutes of what I just said. The penny will drop. And if they don't get that, they will get this. Okay? This is scarcity reminder. This is data and inspiration for this, again, comes from HODL 15. I made some adjustments to this because, as a scarcity reminder, the number of Bitcoin mined over the last four days of April, 3,600. In 14 days, it'll be 1,800, okay? And you divide that by four, you get the daily production, which is 450. Now, the number of Bitcoin bought by the US ETFs, 4,470. And by the way, it was not a strong week compared to normal, okay? BlackRock normally buys 5,000 a day on average over 58 days. These puppies only bought 4,470 over the last four days. So it's not, it was a weak week. And Mr. 100 has bought 2,267 Bitcoin. All right. And then Robinhood has bought 700. And then there's 8 billion people left on the planet. And guess what? They have minus 3,837 to buy. There is none. Nearly 4,000 Bitcoin is the deficit. The deficit over four days. When you take away all the stuff purchased by the ETS, by Mr. 100, and by Robinhood alone. And I'm just talking about a small piece. If anybody sells here, they are absolutely out of their freaking minds. <laughs> now, take these numbers, and we're going to go forward 14 days. That becomes 1,800. Okay. The number mined in four days. The number bought by US ETS would say it's the same. 4,470. Uh, Mr. 100, say they're still stacking the same amount, 2,267. And by the way, Mr. 100 doesn't care about the price. If it's 30,000 or 45,000 or 73,000, they buy regardless in 100 Bitcoin increments. Remember that. So the price isn't impacting many of these buyers. Robinhood, imagine that continues too. There will be a deficit of nearly 6,000 Bitcoin every four days or 1,400 a day. This is crazy, absolutely crazy, okay? And by the way, that's 3.13 times. That deficit is over three times the actual supply mined, assuming the miners sell everything, which they do not, okay? And there's a little meme called, and it's gone. I don't even know what show that's from, but I think it's very cute because that's what Bitcoin is, everybody. So hope you enjoyed the show. Hit the like if you learned something new. The numbers are staggering, horrifying, exciting if you're a bag holder. And thank you as well to Team Tessa and K8 and who did miss the platform formerly known as, etc. Thank you all for coming. I hope you picked up something new and got excited. And as usual, it's going to be a good weekend. Bitcoin is just under 68K, but we'll see. That's just what it does. Thanks, everybody. See you later.